The universe is where it has always been and will always be. At least that's what the word universe implies. Regardless of the very nature of the universe, our knowledge of it is rather poor. The Big Bang happened billions of years ago. However, the speed at which information travels, the ultimate speed, the speed of light, is limited. So while the entire universe may be truly limitless, the observable universe is not. The leading ideas of theoretical physics suggest that there are many vast universes. While the universe in which we find ourselves is only one of them, at the same time, it should be realized that some theories have reason to be considered scientific, while others are the product of wild imagination. The ability to distinguish the former from the latter is practically a useful skill. Let's try to understand where the theory of the multiverse ends science and begins fiction. At this stage of its development, our universe has a number of properties that scientists have the opportunity to explore with the help of ultra-modern equipment available to the world's laboratories. In particular, it is possible to establish that the universe is expanding. In order to track this process, scientists, using the achievements of technology, studying certain parameters inherent in galaxies, their speed, distance, and distance from us. The farther away they are, the faster they are moving away. In the context of the general theory of relativity, this means that the universe is expanding. And if the universe is expanding today, that means it was smaller and denser in the past. If you go back far enough into the past, you find that it was more homogeneous and hotter, because shorter wavelengths of light mean higher energies and temperatures. This brings us back to the Big Bang. There are good reasons to believe that the Big Bang was not the starting point for the evolution of the universe. The ability of science to delve deeper into the history of the universe is limited. We are getting more and more data that question the postulates of the Big Bang theory, while new, strong arguments in favor of the theory of cosmic inflation are given. The 1980s were an extremely productive period in the process of studying cosmic inflation. For example, the following problems were raised. What should the seeding of large-scale structures look like? Temperature and density fluctuations should exist on scales larger than the cosmic horizon. All regions of space, even with fluctuations, must have constant entropy. There must be a temperature maximum reached by the Big Bang. Highly accurate data, which were obtained as a result of research conducted in the following decades, allowed to confirm all the above hypotheses. This means that the theory of cosmic inflation continued to gain momentum. This theory states that there were no particles, antiparticles, and radiation in the universe before the Big Bang. There was a large amount of spatial energy that forced the universe to expand at a truly cosmic rate, rapidly, inexorably, and exponentially. At some point, however, the inflation stopped. As a result, matter and energy were formed. Everything was prepared for the Big Bang. So it was cosmic inflation, not the Big Bang. That was at the origin of the universe. If it had been limited to that, it would have resulted in a homogeneous universe of enormous size. All its regions would have the same properties, and the same laws would apply. What lay beyond the visible horizon would resemble our environment. However, all this does not give the slightest argument in favor of the theory of the multiplicity of the universe. More precisely, it would not give, if not to take into account, the quantum nature of all physically existing objects, and therefore, even the mysterious and unrecognized cosmic inflation, together with everything that surrounds it, is a quantum field. For inflation to have the properties of quantum fields, the following conditions must be fulfilled. There must be inherent uncertainties in its properties. The field must be described by a wave function. The values of the field are stretched with time. It is assumed that inflation has not ended everywhere at the same time. It stopped only in some randomly selected independent areas. Meanwhile, the space separating them continued to expand. Here we can conclude that there is a certain number of regions where the space inflation stopped and the Big Bang occurred. At that, these regions had no possibility to interact in any way because they are separated by permanently expanding space. Once started, inflation will continue guaranteed and indefinitely. At least in some places, the end of cosmic inflation gives rise to the Big Bang. It becomes the universe we have the opportunity to observe is just an isolated region where it once ceased. Beyond our sight are many similarly enclosed spaces that evolved in the likeness of the universe we inhabit. This is what the theory of multiple universes claims. It is based on two independent, scientifically proven postulates of theoretical physics, the quantum nature of everything and the properties of cosmic inflation. 
Inflation, as well as the invisible region of the universe, is not measurable. But the two theories that underlie it have demonstrated their validity. If they are true, multiple universes will be an inevitable consequence. And we will live in them. So what of it? There are quite a large number of hypothetical, scientifically inevitable consequences, the validity of which we have no way of observing in practice. And the multiverse is one of them. It is unlikely that, knowing about it, you will be able to extract for yourself any practical benefit. However, this does not cancel the fact that this prediction, made on the basis of theoretical aspects, is of some interest to science. But why do so many scientists engaged in theoretical physics publish so many scientific papers on the topic of multiverse? Why do they want to convey to us that there are other universes, parallel to ours, and speculate about the connections between them? Why do they tell us about cosmic strings to which multiple universes are attached? On what basis do they claim that our universe is perfectly adapted for life? Cosmic string theory assumes a long list of variables that can take on different values. This theory makes no predictions whose veracity can be ascertained, so we have to trust the reasoning of string vacuums. You have probably heard of cosmic numbers such as 10 to the 500th degree, which are often found in string theory as values of one of the parameters. None of us can know what those parameters are, or why they take on those particular values, since no one has the ability to calculate them. In this physical universe, it is important to observe all that we can, and to piece together whatever knowledge we have access to. Only by relying on the full range of presumably reliable data can hypotheses about the nature and characteristics of the universe be made that will have a scientific basis. However, not all the consequences will be possible to trace in reality. Incidentally, this is true, for example, of the existence of multiple universes. But when people speculate about fundamental constants, about the laws of physics, about the meanings of string vacuums, they are not doing science. They are just speculating. Nobody forbids them to argue endlessly about the multiplicity of the universe, citing as an argument the calculations of famous scientific theorists. But it is extremely unlikely that we will get a scientifically authoritative theory. Write in the comments what you think about the theory of the plurality of the universe. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to ensure you don't miss future videos.